Good Thursday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, just past the bottom of the hour, and as we get into the rest of the day today, we're going to be seeing the possibility of a lot more sunshine, so some very comfortable conditions in the Mid-South for today and also into tomorrow. So if you have any plans for outdoors today, tomorrow is going to be your best bet as we look into the rest of the forecast toward, again, the weekend. We're going to be seeing some changes taking place, including the possibility of some showers as we go into to around the weekend. Not an entire washout, so definitely good news on that. And then also into next week, lots of questions from a lot of you on social media, email, and also again, as we have seen uh, in the Mid-South area over the last couple of days, called and sent to the News Channel 3 newsroom about the possibility of a winter storm heading our way as we get into next week. Is it possible? Sure. We're in winter time. Absolutely. Could be on the possible side of things. But as of right now, the computer models that we use to forecast things Again, not exactly in great agreement about that, so we'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on all that. If you've never been here before, welcome to Weather Overtime. This is our exclusive video weather blog, keeping you updated as to what's going on in the Mid-South area. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, got the forecast in a nutshell here for you. Also in the blue bar at the bottom of the screen, scrolling along from right to left, the seven-day forecast down here, which you can also catch at wrhg.com slash weather on all of these social media channels and, of course, my email address at austin.onic at wrag.com. Welcome to everybody who's checking in this morning. Drop your location and your weather reports if you've got them into the fork, into the comment bar down below. Let's see where you're from and, more importantly, what the weather's doing in your location. If you're in the Mid-South, North Mississippi, East Arkansas, West Tennessee, Shelby County, Memphis metro area, that's great. If you're in from out of town, let us know where you are. We're glad to have you along, and thanks for checking in on a very nice day coming up. Bit on the brisk side. This morning, we'll take a look at current temperatures in just a bit. In the meantime, going back into sunshine today, mid-50s by lunchtime, that's pretty nice, but lower 60s sound even better for high temperatures later on this afternoon. So looking a lot better as we go into this afternoon. Tomorrow, as these winds turn back around out of the south, the winds were out of the west yesterday. That brought in some very dry, very comfortable air. Still a bit on the cool side yesterday. Now, as we get into today, and on Friday, we'll be looking for the winds to switch out of the south at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. That's going to be important in two ways. It's going to be keeping our temperatures up, and it's also going to be doing a good job of moving moisture up from the Gulf of Mexico. So more clouds on Friday and more chances of rain into the weekend, all thanks to those southerly winds. So kind of a good-bad situation for right now on that. Not seeing any severe weather at this time, so definitely good news at this point across much of the area. So again, thanks everybody for checking in. Who do we got here? Gosnell, Arkansas. Arkansas 33, Sharon A. Crowell. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And thanks to everybody else for checking into the area so far this morning. Again, if you're just checking in and joining us, location and your reports, again, for temperatures, wind speed, if you've got that weather station out there, put it to good use and let us know what's going on in your location. Nation's capital, Potomac River, and the National Mall from the National Park Service. Dozens, hundreds of webcams around the continental United States and beyond. So if you'd like to see more about what's going on out there, Follow the hashtag FindYourPark or opt, O-P-T, opt outside, and find out more about where the cameras are from the National Park Service, like in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. A little bit of fog and haze back in the valley. Looks like a possible wildfire, a bit of a plume of smoke out there from Purchase Knob in western parts of North Carolina. A little closer to home, sunshine from the water towers north of Germantown High School. The area around Poplar and Mendenhall, the towers there, Poplar Pike and Germantown Parkway, good clear visibility for this morning. A bit on the brisk side in Germantown, we're back to 36 degrees after lows this morning, almost into the mid to upper 20s in and around the area, so decently clear at view out there. Marvell, Arkansas, 31 degrees. Anthony White, thank you very much for that one. Thanks to everybody else for checking in and for the very kind words out there. Uh, gentleman from Thailand, again, I wish I knew how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry about that. 27 Celsius in Thailand. Sounds like a nice warm day over there. 31 degrees and clear in east. Tennessee. Jeff Livingston, thank you very much uh, for that one for this morning. View from West Memphis, Arkansas, downtown Memphis, Tennessee on the horizon. Kind of hard to see in the glare. I-40, I-55 traffic on the heavy side here moving to and from downtown Memphis. And again, back on the chilly side, back in the lower 30s with winds a little breezy out of the south. So we do have a bit of a wind chill in the lower 20s around West Memphis this morning. Traffic on the heavy side around I-240. 
and Poplar this morning from our Hilton East Memphis camera. Give me a second to readjust the camera here for just a second so we can pan on down to see what's going on around Poplar East and Westbound Park Avenue and the Quince overpass. Good clear visibility here and no major slowdowns being reported. Corey Ventura will have more on traffic throughout the rest of the morning at just about 739 right now. More coming up at 755 and 825 on traffic coming up in just a bit. 27 in Hardeman County. K. McPherson, thank you very much for that one. Appreciate everybody else checking in for this morning from all over the Mid-South. Thank you very much uh, for everybody for watching the, our netcast. Storm Tracker 3S radar, again, flocks of birds out there for the most part showing up. There's really not much of anything else to talk about as we have some very dry conditions for right now. Now, over the next couple of days, this storm system out across the West Coast, moving its way across the Rockies and kind of impeded in its progress, it could be racing across the country. If we had flat prairie-like areas between the west coast and us, we would see these storm systems arrive a lot quicker, but the mountains do a very good job of kind of slowing those storm systems down and not allowing them to move that quickly. Now, when they get out of the Rockies and into the Plain States, on the other side of the Rockies, they move, they spread out, they get a lot stronger, and that's where we may see some more problems into next week. But until then, this is still out over the portions of the, the eastern Pacific and may affect us into the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Pemiscot County R3 School, you're at 40 degrees, live, real-time, on your side weather from the weather bug system, which you can access at wreg.com slash weather. If you'd like to see the nearest site to your location, mid to upper 30s around U of M Earth Sciences, 38 also in the backyard, and from the University of Mississippi, you've dropped a little bit from 40 degrees back to about 35. Winds are light, but we do still have some wind chills out across portions of the area for early this morning. See, Rosie Lee Arnold, 28 in Savannah, Tennessee. Thank you very much. Uh, Talina Giannini Parent, hope I'm saying that right, 22 in Vine Grove, Kentucky. Thank you very much. And thanks to everybody else for checking in from across the Mid-South area. Brighton, Tennessee, 29. Catherine Lovelife, thank you very much for that one. And everybody else who's checking in for this morning. Anthony White, Eastern Arkansas, Marvell, 31 degrees. Thank you very much uh, for that check-in across the Mid-South area. And again, for the rest of the day today, running the numbers into lunchtime and just afterwards, upper 50 lower 60s with winds coming in from out of the south. That's going to bump the numbers up throughout the rest of the day today and keep things pretty nice into tonight, although temperatures will fall off pretty quickly after sunset. News Channel 3 at 10, Jim Jagger's complete forecast coming up a little bit later this evening, lower to mid 40s by the time we hit News Channel 3 at 10, and then getting into very early tomorrow morning, looks like temperatures by about daybreak will be in the mid-30s. Now notice winds southeast, again, very much on the mild side for these temperatures. We could be a lot colder at this time of the year and staying relatively clear. Then we look back toward the north and to the west. We've got some gray colors here. That's the cloud cover that's going to be making its way a little closer to us. And there's chances of rainfall as we get into Friday morning well to our west. Joplin looks like Willow Springs into and around the area, up to around Fort Leonard Wood, down toward Fayetteville, Arkansas, and around Tulsa. Could be some scattered showers developing here. I don't think we're going to see anything in the way of showers here in the Mid-South until we get into around the weekend itself, and we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Now, out of about the dozen or so, give or take, computer models that we use to forecast the weather, a lot of you have been asking about the potential for our next winter storm. Yes, there is that potential, and yes, some of the computer models are showing some snowfall as we get into around Groundhog Day next Friday. But here's the thing, this far out, Again, taking a look at the potential of that, yeah, there is the potential of it, but as some of you have pointed out, a lot of other sources online or otherwise across the Mid-South have already started talking about amounts of snow and ice. I'm not going to do that, and I don't care to do that, because again, the farther you go into the future, the more things are going to change over the next several days. The potential is there, yes, but again, talking about how much we're going to get this far out is a little bit on the excessive side side, and we're just really not prepared to do anything like that here uh, for my part at News Channel 3. Anyway, again, we will keep you updated on how these things progress, because I'll just bet you in about the next, say, just three to five days, this forecast is going to change by quite a lot. Again, either we're going to see a lot more coming our direction, it'll stay the same, or we may see this whole area of snow just poof and go away from here, and we won't see much of anything whatsoever. 
Keep in mind that we are about at least about 150 to almost 200 hours away from this forecast working its way toward us, this storm system, this next supposed storm system coming on through. So are there signs of something happening? Yeah, there could be some storm system coming through the area by the time we go into early February. But if you're looking for snowfall amounts, ice amounts, estimates of how much freezing rain we're going to get, anybody out there who wants to ask about school closings, not going to get it here for the time being, but we will keep you advised on that over the course of the next several days. Storms like this, again, it's like watching down the roadway. You can see a semi-trailer way off in the distance. You know it's a semi-truck. You know it's heading your direction. You can kind of tell the colors from what you can see on it maybe even estimate the speed a little bit, but until that semi-trailer gets way up close to you, you're not going to be able to tell who the truck is owned by. Again, you're not going to be able to tell what condition it's in, who's driving it, stuff like that. So we have to wait on stuff like this before it gets closer, before we start throwing out details to you. Now, again, here's what you want to do is keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for updates on this. Going through the next few days, very much on the mild side for today, lower 60s today, lower 60s tomorrow, starting off with sunshine and then more clouds heading into the forecast as we go throughout the course of the next couple of days. So this is where we're going to be seeing, again, some very mild conditions, but we're still not seeing anything in the way of rainfall throughout much of the day on Friday. It's going to be Saturday. Again, for those of you who have outdoor plans, here's where the problem starts coming through. Shower is possible on Saturday, all the way through Saturday, right on into Saturday night. So if you have any plans for outdoors, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Whole weekend will not be a washout, so good news on that. 50% in the morning, and then clearing out as we head into Sunday afternoon and getting some more sunshine in here. So the really good news is that all the weekend is not lost. We see, again, some sunshine out there, but we're just going to have to get through Saturday and early morning Sunday before we get rid of all the rainfall. Now, once that clears the area, dry, cooler air wraps its way around that system. That's the one off the west coast we were just talking about. Then that cold air makes its way through, a little cooler at least back in the upper 40s. These numbers will also change, so keep it tuned for more on that. Now we warm back up again by midweek next week, rapidly running out of January and heading into around the area of the early part of February. This is where we see again the potential change coming on through right into around the first couple of days of Friday. Friday next is where we see that potential of much colder air. This is my forecast for right now, back in the lower 40s for highs. Now, that doesn't seem quite like Arctic blast territory, which you, again, may have seen on other media sources in and around the Mid-South area, but this is what I see in the computer model forecast. If this changes, and it will, you can stay tuned to News Channel 3, so we'll keep you updated on that. And so far, the only chance we've got of anything involving precip is going to be a light chance of just rain expected sometime next Thursday evening before it really gets cold enough out there to really cause any problems. So again, not below freezing right now, not a great amount of moisture for the time being and getting into next weekend. So far, there's really not a lot out there. But again, this will change over the next several days. So, so far, confidence is not high that we're going to be seeing anything from this next storm system coming on through. As always, like with the stock market, your mileage may vary. Things may change out there. So definitely, again, want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more information about into around the Mid-South area for right now. Thanks, everybody, for joining us again for this morning. You see, when there is thunder in the winter, most memorable winter storms follow in 7 to 10 days. Stacy Matheny. Haven't heard that before, but uh, sounds interesting to check out. Might have to see what I can do right there. Tina Tillery, postal carriers and delivery personnel are tired of snow and ice, I can imagine, even though neither rain nor snow nor dark of night, etc., etc. Senatobia, Mississippi, Betty Levingston, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for watching, and thanks to everybody else into the Bid South for checking on in. Teresa Overturf, need about... 10 feet of snow. Okay, well, we're not going to see that much out there, but uh, thank you a lot for checking on through. Now, we're also in another season right now. The potential for severe weather does exist. This is the prime time for severe weather in the Mid-South between January and roughly late April, early May, somewhere in there. This is where we get the most powerful storms, the most dangerous weather of the Mid-South area. Yes, we can get ice storms and snow at the same time or at least relatively soon, but at the same time as winter wanes and we go into around springtime, we can get some pretty truly nasty weather in and around here. So again, for the next couple of days into the quiet conditions now, 
is the time to get ready for severe weather. What do you need to do if you've never been through severe weather before? Maybe you've just moved to the Mid-South area and you've never had a chance to experience a tornado warning or anything like that. Now, when the sun is shining, is the time to practice and get ready and know what needs to be done before severe weather happens. And if you'd like to know more about this, National Weather Service will be teaching another about Baker's dozen worth of severe weather spotter training sessions. This is a spotter class. This is not a chase class. If you want to learn that, you have to go to other experts out there and you do not chase storms unless you have been expertly trained, period, end of sentence. Do not do it. It's not safe. But the more people we have out there watching what goes on and being able to report back information via this handy dandy device or amateur radio, if you're an amateur radio operator, back to the National Weather Service in Memphis, let's say you see something in and around Ripley, Tennessee. You see a rotating wall cloud. You see large baseball-sized hail, and that's moving north-northwest, and that could put people around Dyersburg, Tennessee in danger. You relay that information from where you are to the National Weather Service in Memphis. They let the authorities know. They let the hospitals know that there could be danger. They let the school systems know what's going on, and more importantly, they let me and my colleagues here at News Channel 3 know about what's going on. So we can let everybody know what's happening, but particularly those people that are going to be in the path of that particular storm, issue the warnings and get people to safety. Your information volunteered out there just by keeping watch as to what goes on can give people lead time and save lives. But you have to know what to look for before, during, and after severe weather. First few meetings coming up, Sumner, Mississippi, Tuesday, February 13th. One week after that at Wynn, Arkansas, the fire department. Thursday, February 22nd in Lexington, Tennessee at the Henderson County Emergency Operations Center. And Thursday, the 1st of March, 6.30 p.m. at Trenton, Tennessee at Gibson County EOC. Where's the meeting for Memphis and Shelby County? Not on this list yet, but it will be in the next several days and weeks. So stay tuned, and we will let you know about that coming up at News Channel 3. Or check here at WREG.com slash weather for more details. My forecast coming up in just about another 10 minutes or so on AM 730 with Bob and Josh on Talk Back Live. Sports chat for the Mid-South area, but they cover a whole bunch of other stuff too. And they have some really great guests on talking about different uh, aspects of sports, both here and, of course, around the rest of the country and around the world. If you can't pick them up here in the Mid-South area because you're too far out of the signal range, get them online at TalkBackLiveNetwork.org for more information on that. Coming up a little bit later this morning, on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Periscope, we're going to talk a little bit more and demonstrate a little bit more about those computer models that I was telling you about. We're going to give you a visual demonstration about what these things look like in what's called a meteogram. If you've never seen these before, really cool to use, great to keep around if you want to do your own forecast. Technically, you don't need me telling you what's going on. You can do your own forecasting, but we would like it if you stay around here so we can tell you a little bit more about what's happening. But if you'd like to know more about that, join me just past 1030 this morning. We'll talk about that. Plus, if you've got friends, loved ones, or relatives serving in the United States military, we've got some brand new locations on whether where the troops are. I'm going to talk more about that, and that'll be coming up this morning, just a little bit past about 1030 or so. So tons of information to be able to see again for right now. And again, a lot more coming up right after News Channel 3 live at night. Why 1033? good number that might just stick in your head or let you know that you can tune in for that. Plus, between about 10 o'clock and 10.30, we tape a lot of updates here in the studio, so I can't talk quite as broad broadly as this, where everybody's taping updates, so we have to give people a little time to get all that figured out and taken care of. So about 10.30 this morning, again, we'll talk more about that, so definitely want to stay tuned for more there. Thanks a lot to everybody for joining us. i got to wrap things up as we'll be back on the air here at about 7.55 with Markova Reed and Corey Ventura. Stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the morning on air and also online and also be sure to join me on all of my social media channels. Thanks for joining us for this morning's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime for Thursday and stick around for more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day.